All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're gonna to be talking about a recent review on deep learning in CT imaging. And this was work that was done with University of Wisconsin-Madison and with Canon Medical. This review just came out in Springer Nature. We'll have it linked up down in the description below. So the first problem that we describe is that in general with iterative reconstruction, which has been introduced in order to reduce dose in CT imaging, there typically is a compromise wherein at relatively low fractions of the iterative reconstruction, you have relatively high noise. And then at relatively high amounts of the iterative reconstruction or high strengths of the iterative reconstruction, you have a texture which has been referred to as plasticky. Essentially the idea of these early iterative reconstruction algorithms was to have the image look more flat or more piecewise constant by crushing down the noise while preserving the edges. In general, this texture is significantly different from that of filtered back projection alone and has not been preferred by radiologists. So in the clinic, oftentimes relatively low strengths of iterative reconstruction are actually used. This issue is not unique to one given vendor. There are citations for all the given vendors describing this issue. Deep learning has now supplanted iterative reconstruction as state of the art for image reconstruction on clinical CT scanners. Two vendors that were the first to release the deep learning as a product to reduce noise in the CT images were GE and Canon. At the time of this review, those were the only two CT vendors offering deep learning. Since that time, Philips was able to take the product as well and receive 510K clearance for a similar denoising network. The idea here is that we need a way to reduce the noise in the images and in standard iterative reconstruction, we use what we call a prior, wherein we're sitting at one pixel with the relative neighbors, and we'd like to reduce the noise while preserving the edges. These standard priors lead to that type of behavior that we talked about, where they appear more plasticky in the image. So deep learning allows us to increase the area of, if you're looking at one pixel, we can look at many more pixels around it in order to figure out how the noise is distributed. And we can also model the directionality and the texture of the noise better with deep learning because of the ability to have many more parameters and for the model to actually train the parameters itself. Essentially with iterative reconstruction, you become limited with engineers doing the tuning and the actual parameters. This is what gives deep learning the power to have better noise texture in comparison with standard iterative reconstruction. These neural networks are trained in a supervised manner by having match pairs of essentially like a ground truth image and then a noisier image. And that image can be made with a relatively high dose filtered back projection as the ground truth or with an iterative reconstruction as the ground truth. And GE chose to use a high dose filtered back projection as the ground truth. Canon chose to come out with uh, iterative reconstruction as the ground truth. The idea in training is you'll have one set being noisy, one set being clean, the high dose filtered back projection being clean or the iterative reconstruction being your clean data. In a CT vendor based solution, the raw data is input and there can be modifications done in the projection domain, especially in the scenario of low signal. There can be modifications done to the view weighting, for instance, especially aspects of motion concerns. So that's kind of an advantage of doing it in the projection domain. In the image domain, if you're operating on the packs, you have to have some additional knowledge in order to communicate. The solution has the advantage that it can operate on multiple inputs from the different CT vendors, but it also has the disadvantage in that when it's operating on these different inputs, it needs to be adaptive in order to understand that there is actually different physics going on from the different vendors. For the pax based solution, it's not gonna be able to be fully optimized quite as well because the pax based solution only gets the output image and doesn't have knowledge of all the earlier steps in the chain. Here's an example in the abdomen where we go from the standard iterative reconstruction 
to the different strengths of low, medium, and high. For the deep learning image reconstruction, this is from GE sample images. You can see there's significant improvement. See there's significant reduction in the noise and the texture hasn't been degraded as in the earlier image we showed above. We're trying to reduce noise in the images going from the filtered back projection result to the pixel shine result with a setting of S as shown here. So you can see there is some reduction in the noise. Um, down here, you can see the true fidelity, which is the GE solution. And then over here, you can see if you apply pixel shine then on top of the true fidelity, this was with the low setting. So again, you can be the judge as you look at the images, but I think that the texture and the noise trade-offs, if you, if you look at them, is better preserved in the vendor-based solution. You'll see a similar trend on the Canon product where you go from the filtered back projection to the ADER is the reconstruction, that's the iterative reconstruction, to the ACE, which is the name of their deep learning. So you can see the images, again, look a little bit more patchy in the middle here. And then that texture is improved with the ACE reconstruction. Finally, we know deep learning can also be applied for some other contexts within CT in addition to the denoising problem. So there's a solution that for what's called the max field of view in order to increase the field of view over what just the detector would allow. So for the case of very large patients, sometimes there's what's called data truncation. In the case that no correction is used, what we have is an image that looks like this on the left, where this is the axial image, and this is the volume rendered image. And you can see the artifacts in the image, and you can also see that we don't have the ability to visualize the soft tissue out past the region of data truncation. So using an improved max field of view reconstruction, which uses deep learning in order to estimate the data outside in that truncated region. You can see there's significant ability in order to estimate the contour of the patient and the soft tissue out there, as well as the contours on the volume rendered image. In the paper, we also have a table that references the different types of image reconstruction from filtered back projection, generations of iterative reconstruction with increasing complexity, and then on the deep learning image reconstruction. So like I said, at the time, Philips did not yet have approval, so that wasn't in this paper. But since then, we can add Philips Precise is now an option for deep learning image reconstruction. If the noise is reduced and if a traditional algorithm is used, what happens is the images start to look more plasticky as we talked about. And that's also correlated with, if we look at what we call our noise power spectrum, which, rep which represents the noise as a function of spatial frequency, that noise power spectrum gets shifted to the left. So in general, when there's measurements that show that the noise power spectra gets shifted to the left, that's a quantitative method of demonstrating that the images are gonna start to look more plasticky. Before the Iterative reconstructions, traditionally, those do end up shifting the noise power spectra significantly to the left. And for deep learning reconstruction, there's not that left shift associated with the reconstructions, especially if the high dose filter back projection is used as a ground truth. In general, one thing we just want to note is that in order to study the properties of these denoising algorithms, we want to look at relatively reasonable doses. So the clinical dose, you know, maybe a dose reduction of a factor of two, but we don't want to do a dose reduction of a factor of 10, for instance. At extreme low doses actually doesn't characterize the denoising algorithms, but rather will characterize what we call low signal processing, which is something that kicks in at extreme low doses where there's not very many photons making it through. And if you don't do any processing like that, you can end up with very significant streaks in your images. I encourage you to go through the paper and go through this table. 
and look at the primary sources as well and judge for yourself about each of these measurement methodologies. This is our review of state of the art at deep learning CT reconstruction. Really appreciate your time. For more detailed version with pictures and motivations on how we ended up using deep learning for CT, see our video here.